you know, we can talk about it, but you know, the old saying talk is cheap, right? So it's, it's all built on action. It, they're going to know if I didn't say a word in that locker room for 82 games in practice, my actions are going to say everything in, in how I deal with things and how I show them. And, and they're watching me too, how I handle situations. So um, the action part of it really is the most important talk. Talk's great. The interview's great. But do you follow through? Do you do you, do you do what you say you're going to do? Or, you know, care's real easy when it's going well. Um, but when there's heat and it's not going well, you're still, are you still caring? Are you loving about them? Are you still interested in what their family's going on? And That was Brad Larson, head coach of the NHL's Columbus Blue Jackets. And you're listening to the Up My Hockey podcast with Jason Padolan. Welcome to Up My Hockey with Jason Padolan, where we deconstruct the NHL journey, discuss what it takes to make it, and have a few laughs along the way. I'm your host, Jason Padolan, a 31st overall draft pick who played 41 NHL games but thought he was destined for 1,000. Learn from my story and those of my guests. This is a hockey podcast about reaching your potential. Hello there, Jason Padolan here with Up My Hockey. Welcome back to the Up My Hockey podcast for episode 84. Today we have on another head coach of the NHL and that's Brad Larson. Brad Larson is a previous guest of the show um, a couple years ago back when he was assistant coach for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, Brad served seven seasons as an assistant coach there. Um, John Tortorella's contract has expired uh, at the end of last season and Columbus went searching for a new candidate, and they found the best option available from within. Uh, exhaustive interview process that Brad talks about here in the interview, and they named Brad uh, the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets. And this uh, just completed his inaugural season as the team's bench boss, and we get into everything um, about his first year, about how he went through the interview process, so about his team and the growth with his team and expectations and, and managing those expectations and helping people get through the adversity and the hard times, uh, what his foundation is as a coach, uh, what he believes uh, to be the way to get the most out of their players. Um, Brad's an awesome dude. He's a, he's a real good human. He was, he was somebody that I had the pleasure of knowing even back in the day. Uh, we played on the same peewee team together in Vernon. Uh, where we won a provincial championship. We also played together for the World Junior Team, uh, won a gold medal together. Uh, Brad played twice for the World Junior Team. Uh, the second time through when I wasn't there, he was the captain of the World Junior Team, won gold twice. Uh, so Brad Brad and I go back a ways. It, it's awesome to follow his, his career arc, what he's doing, even his growth, not only as a coach and his growth as a player, but also just his growth as a human. He's always expanding, always trying to improve. And, and you'll, see, you'll hear his authenticity uh, you'll hear his transparency and his honestness um, throughout the entire interview. He he puts people first. Um, he he has no problem sharing his opinion. Uh, he's very open to hearing others. He enjoys a good conversation, and um, and he cares about the people around him. and And uh, he uses the words love, care, trust um, throughout. Uh, that that was one of the things he said he used in his interview process. And, uh, and when you put that at the forefront of your philosophy and your approach to hand handling elite world-class athletes, uh, with that hard, hard edge to him, like th there's nothing soft and cuddly about Brad. Brad's very, um, he's very straight. He, 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 he commands a presence that there's a, there's a way that he speaks and, and there's a tone to his voice that this man is not a pushover, never has been, never will be, but he cares, you know, he cares. And there's an honesty to that care. And, and, uh, and I believe that that mix that he has, his internal mix is something that, um, that not everybody does have. And, and it takes a certain person to be able to lead an NHL team. And I believe the Columbus Blue Jackets picked a, picked a great person to do that. And uh, you're going to get a gift of a conversation here, an hour and 50 minutes, I believe, Brad took from his day and time away from his family. And I thank him for that. Um, I know this time of the year he treasures uh, drastically, you know, his wife and his kids who he doesn't get to see as much of during the year. And, and for him to spend an hour and 50 minutes downloading a season um, for, for you, my, my listeners and my platform, I'm super grateful. And I hope you are too, because 
um, we get a little look inside, you know, what it takes to do what, what he does. And, and for all of us here listening who, you know, either players who want to be better, uh, maybe coaches who want to be better, parents who want to do a better job, like a lot of the tenants here that, we, that we're speaking about, the intangibles, the character, um, you know, those, those words, uh, love, care, trust, like you can, you can use these not only in, in, I mean, in any avenue, right, in sports, in, in your relationships, in, in your life, in your business, uh, when, when, there is a, when there is a level, a human level of caring, of support, uh, of wanting the best for that person with, with, with no other motivation, um, that, that goes a long way. So uh, love what you have coming here. Uh, enjoy the hour and 50 minutes with Brad. Uh, I know I sure did. And um, yeah, let's get to the conversation with the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets, Mr. Brad Larson. All right, back to the podcast. Up my hockey, Brad Larson for round two. Uh, this time as a head coach of a National Hockey League team. Thanks so much for coming back, Lars. You bet. Um, yeah, to get things rolling. I mean, we've you, you've you finished your first eighty-two games as as the as the head bench boss. Uh, we had a little bit of chance to talk offline. Uh, how was that whole process of becoming a head coach of NHL team and, and, and interviewing? I know you've done that before. Um, I'm not sure how many times you've interviewed for a head coach job, but uh, this time it was successful. What, what was that process like? Well, it was intense. I mean, it's, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, it's a unique situation because I had been with the organization for so long too. You know, I've been here 11 years and, and, you know, they're looking for change. Number one, um, but, you know, it, that was my dilemma is I, I worked for a guy who I, I deeply respected in John Tortorella. I thought we did a tremendous job with our groups. And but, you know, so going into this interview process and what that looked like, uh, it certainly wasn't going to uh, I believed in what we were doing. It, it wasn't like I, I, I had all these uh, different ideas and thought we should change all this and all that. So um, the number one thing is just showing that I was uh, or letting them know that I was ready, that I was capable ready to lead and and um um how i do it differently was just being me and and really torts is so unique in in how he approaches things and uh he's he's an incredible man incredible coach but you know there's one torts there really is i mean he you probably put him in the daryl sutter category and how he coaches and and uh, uh but so i i knew it's how do you articulate that right in your in your interview and and when you build your presentation and stuff so that was kind of my 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 focus going into that and um but yeah i had five interviews you know i've been here 11 years and had five interviews with these guys and so and then in amongst that um some other teams had called and i was you know at, at first they, they actually denied my uh um you know an interview process with the, with with two teams which is a good bad thing right i mean if they like you that that's that's positive if they're like yeah go ahead um you know, then maybe they're not as interested. So it was kind of a catch 22. But as it went further along, they they finally allowed access to one team. And, and so I had to build that presentation as well as continue on this. So it was, it was a lot. It was for, for two and a half weeks. It was it was intense and, and just getting things together and your ideas, because really they're totally different uh, interviews. And, and, and I know this team so well and I didn't know the other team so well. So it was it was very time consuming. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, I got the job and, and was thrilled. And, and um, you know, there, there's a lot of good coaches, a lot of capable coaches, but just feel real blessed to get that opportunity. And, and uh, yeah, and got through my first year. So it was great. Yeah, no, congrats. Um, like you said, I mean, I, I know, and you've spoken very openly about your respect for Torts. Um, did you know necessarily why he got left go, go? And if there was a differentiating factor or something you didn't want to follow in his footsteps were, you know I mean? That it might've helped you in your own process or, or did you not kind of, you know, dig that deep? Well, with him, he, he left on his own terms. They didn't let him go. It was his, his contract was up. And I think they had a real uh, honest conversation. One thing about torts when you, you, you get to know him, is his self-assessment's great and he knows where he's at with the team. He, he felt it was time to walk away. Um, he, he, six years is a long time uh, with one team. It really is. And, and the messaging and how hard you push these guys. And, and really we, we had built and, and, you know, from, from the time he got here, we, we pushed and we built and, and grew this team to a, a very respectable level. 
um, very competitive, hard nosed team. You know, obviously it was, you know, three years ago when we beat Tampa, we kind of pushed the chips in the middle and added Duchesne and those guys. And, and uh, we we're a real good team. They're very, very close to get through Boston um, going in the second round. So, and, but then there was a shift. We lost some players, some guys left. And, and um, so you kind of push up and you're coming down and, and, you know, the one thing that he saw is that this was going to be, you know, of a, a retool, a rebuild, however you want to word it. But we were, there was a shift in, in leadership. There was going to be a shift in, in youth. And was he ready to go through all that again with this group? Um, and, and a lot of same guys. So it's, it gets tricky for a head coach. It, could he do it? Absolutely, he could do it. But will the message go stale? Or are they able to go through it again, the guys that have been here? And, and he was – he was, I think he was spot on. I think the timing was great for both of them. Uh, not just because I got the job. There was, like I said, there was many capable guys, but he, he was very uh, cognizant of where he was with this team and it was time to, to, to walk away. So um, as far as is, is when, when that got brought up in the interview, you know, they, they, they saw how we worked. They saw how we, we did things. And I think with coaches and managers all the time, you're going to have uh, philosophical differences, uh, timing on, on some of your young guys. Are they ready? Are they not ready? Uh, patience sounds great in, in July and August, but uh, when we start getting in December and January, all of a sudden patience turns to urgency and they want to see guys. And so those are the things you're fighting all the time. And, and how hard do you push them? How hard, uh, how much ice time do you give them? How much responsibility? especially as a younger player, uh, too much too soon can be real bad for these guys. It, it, it can really impact their careers. And you've got to be very careful how much you give them and if they're ready for it. And so um, so I think those are some of the things that are highlighting and, and being a young team and where we're at and how we're building. It was, uh, you know, whether they were looking for new messaging or not, you know, you'd have to ask them. I'm not going to speak for them, but um, – I can tell you this, I knew how excited I was and passionate about this opportunity because I saw the shift. Um, I saw the leadership change. I saw a lot of youth coming in and, and that's a really uh, neat time to come in as a coach. Uh, we all want to inherit the, the great teams, but I think there's so much value to, to being there at ground level. And I think, you know, we're not bare. We're not, this isn't bare cupboards. And uh, we have Zach Wierenski, we got the Bjorkstrands, we got Nyquist, we got this, you know, Elvis Merzlikens and Tarasov as a goalie tandem and Corpusello coming back. Um, you know, you have Patrick Liney, you have Boone Jenner. So you start building around it. You know, we we're fortunate enough to draft a, a Cole Sillinger, who's been a tremendous player, 18 years old, come in and, and he's going to be a real special player. Chinnikov coming in. So there's a lot to be excited about our group. And, you know, this year coming up, we got a six and a 12 in the first round again, you know, so, you know, it's as a, as a young coach coming in and getting that opportunity, it's, it's, I'm, I'm so excited because you get to grow with that group. And, you know, we know there's a, uh, there can be a shelf life with coaches, but I'm really hoping I get to see this through. Cause I think this group's going to be special here in, in, you know, two, three years. That's fantastic. Uh, Maybe to, j just backtrack a little bit, and just for people out there who probably don't know, and I mean, I'm, myself, I guess, is in that is in that camp. When you're talking about preparing something as far as for an interview as a coach, yeah. what does that presentation look like? Like, what what is what does that look like to prepare for an interview as an NHL head coach? Well, it, it's two things for me, and and what I tried to do is give him a, I wanted to give him a takeaway package uh, of of who I am, uh, experiences, so that. Uh, so if someone doesn't know me as well, that they could grab it, they could look at it and, and understand, uh, you know, where I played, who I was, um, where I was a leader. You know, one thing about being a coach, they don't care about your goals and assists. It's not a it's not about that. It's about, I think, things that uh, you're trying to bring to light is, you know, where were you captain? You know, were you winning? Um, you know, and I, I've been fortunate being several of those positions as captain and, and played for my country and won some things. So. So those are the things you kind of bring to light. And then just your experience. I mean, I, you know, when I, during that interview, I'm saying I'm, this is my 24th year of pro hockey coming up, which is crazy. You know, and I, I was 44 at the time. So I've been longer in pro hockey than out of it. And so when they're looking at a young coach and going up, well, is he inexperienced? I'm like, no, not at all. I, it, and it, I, I've been in the game longer than I've, uh, you know, as far as my, my timeline and how long I've been on this earth here, I, I've been in pro hockey. That's what I've been doing. And I played it for 13 and I've been coaching for 11. And, um, 
and one thing I was very fortunate was, is just being under torts as far as how he mentored me and how much responsibility he gave me. And so all those things. So you're trying to present that, articulate that show, uh, but then you've got to give him a clear plan and, you know, how you're going to do it. And, and that's kind of what I focus on, not so much uh, change, but how am I going to lead? What's going to be important to me? What's going to be important to our group? What are going to be the, with the standard and the foundation for our group? How are we going to build this? What's the one, three, five year plan for this group? Um, where do I see us right now? And, and that's the thing of, of knowing this group. Um, I, I, I tapped in the analytics side a little bit and went into some things that are very important for me as far as type of player and, and um, really type of character. And, and I categorize that and, and rank them. And um, so you have a clear picture of, 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 you know, analytics are great, but that's just one piece of the pie for me. I think there's there's so many other intangibles that you you can't quantify with a number. You can't just put on and go, well, he's an eight, and and it doesn't really show up. There's these things that the intangibles in the dressing room, in the gym, and how they handle themselves in pressure situations and their teammates. So I wanted to give them a whole picture of the pie, not just one area. And so that's what you're kind of forming, and that's that that's how I, I went about my presentation and um, trying to – to show them the clear vision that I had, the plan that was going to be put in place, how he's going to utilize uh, the resources of, of the ownership, the management, what, you know, cause they're putting a lot of money in certain areas. Well, how am I going to utilize that? How are we going to work together? I, I really wanted it to be collaborative. It's not a, it's not, a, it's not my train here. It's everybody, you know, we're all, we're all in this for the same reasons. And so just what that was going to look like in, in that collaborative kind of setting and, and, and kind of put that, that that visual for them um and and really just showing my excitement and passion for the job it was uh it, it's something that i i truly love coaching i do I, I love doing it every day and even in the bad days and i can share many stories where it was frustrating or, or tough days but those are the most rewarding days when you get through them and when you put the work in and you see the growth in your group and and that's that's what coaching is it's not when you're winning winning's easy you know it, you just kind of get out of the way uh, let them do their thing, but it's when it gets hard. And how are you going to motivate? How are you going to how are you going to tap into these guys? And there's you got 23 different personalities in different stages of the career. Some guys are in a contract year. Some guys are in the first year of an eight year deal. Some guys are coming out of their entry level. Some you know there's all these different things that you have to take into account. And they're and they're humans. They have families. They they they're thinking about this. So um, you it, it's a uh, it's a unique job because it's, you know, you'd think it would get mundane and, and very uh, ho-hum, but it's not every day, even when winning it, there's, there's so many different challenges and that's, that's, it's like this puzzle piece that you're always trying to put together. Right. That, uh, that would be a question that I would add. I mean, if I was a general manager uh, in this day and age, and if I was interviewing a coach, like I would want to know what the plan was to navigate the room. You know, because I, I think that there are different approaches uh, depending on your personality, meaning the head coach's personality, right? Who he wants to incorporate uh, to do that, whether, you know, whether it be an assistant coach type scenario or if it's the, you know, the open door policy in, in quotes. Uh, it, do Did you have that as part of your presentation or was there like kind of a, this is how I want to deal with the room and, and the guys? Yeah, well, and I'll give you three words. And I said it several times in my conversation. Uh, my presentation with them and and it was love care and trust and you know you got to love on these guys and you know and, and when you were talking about hockey that that usually seems counterproductive or it doesn't really fit in but um to love on these guys is to respect them and, and understand their humans first and how how you're going to re it's a relational thing right and how you're going to uh, relate to them because everybody's very different they're in different stages of their life there could be stuff going on in their life um and that's where it, carries over to care and you got to care about them, not just when they're playing well. And, and I truly believe in that. I don't think, you know, uh, you, you can just care about somebody or, or, or do it when things are just going well. It's when it's, when it's really not going well is when you truly got to care about them and give them a plan and the solution, how you're going to get better because that builds trust in, and really trust is built over time. It's not, you can't fast track it. You can't manufacture it. You're going to go through things. So, the more opportunities I could, I could show love and these guys care about them and build trust. It, it's, I think that is really the building blocks and the foundation of where we want to be. If, 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 and that's different than the standard and, and, and how hard we're going to work. And that's the hockey side of it. I think 
the, the human element gets lost in this at times. And, and um, I'm not in it to just win the race and try and get the Stanley Cup and be successful. I, I, I don't think you can fast track that. I think especially this the stage where we're at with our team, I, I truly believe that, you know, to push these guys to a level where I think we need to push them, they got to trust me. And I'm a first time head coach. They don't know me. They shouldn't trust me. Um, and how do you build trust? Well, it's over time and going through things together. Uh, you know, you, you talk about relationships, whether you've been married or long term girlfriend, it takes time. It, 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 love is built over a long, long time. It, you don't fall in love in two days. That's lust. It's totally different. And, and to just show care about somebody, you have to go through situations. And, um, you know, three weeks into my job, uh, you know, we lost a goalie. A goalie died. Um, I got a call at, at, at uh, July 4th at 1130 at night saying one of my goalies just, just died from a firework accident. And my heart just sank. It was like it was an, an, an unbelievable experience and just oh, the pain and suffering. And, and I'm, I'm in my truck the next morning at 5 a.m. driving to Michigan and not sure what I'm getting into. But I knew I had to be there and just just to be there and try and help them. I don't know what there's nothing you could say. You can't. You can't uh, you can't say enough things. It's just to be there um, because I wanted to be there, not because I'm a coach and it looks good on a resume. I wanted to be there with them and, and, and cry with them and hug on them and, and do what I could to help them. Um, so so that that's something that's a situation that just happened. That's one situation. But what I'm saying is these these things are important to me. Uh, I believe they're foundational, I think. Um, anything worth having in life, it's going to take time. And it's going to, you know, when you're building love, uh, care and, and, and trust, it, you, it takes time. It, it, there's a building process to that. So I really focused on those things. Um, I think the stage of our group, it, it's, it's, that's exactly where we're at. They're, they're young. We're, we're the second youngest team in the league. We're the, we were the youngest team starting the year. Um, and you know, most of, the, the pundits and, and experts had us finish in the bottom three or five in the league. Uh, and we were one game under 500. We, we certainly overachieved. Our group went through the wall right to the end of the final buzzer, which I was so proud to watch. But these guys truly, truly cared about each other. You could see it in building that family environment that, that's genuine, not manufactured, but genuine where they feel comfortable coming to the ring. And, but that's when I truly believe you can push and I, because they know that your heart's in the right place. It's not about me. It's not about, I'm not trying to build a resume. And what I'm trying to do is get the most out of them and make sure that, um, you know, they all say they want to win, you know, and, and so, but winning, there's a sacrifice to winning. There's, there's a massive commitment to winning and, and it's my job to help direct them along with my staff. So, um, but you've got to have these other things in place first. It doesn't, I, it can't just point fingers and, you know, I can yell at them and get them to do stuff, but that's going to run dry. Eventually you're going to hit a wall on that. So uh, I think these guys did it collectively. I think they worked together on that. And you saw a group that uh, truly enjoyed coming to the rink, putting in the work. And, and now, you know, we're going to have to do it again and, and really up the ante this year. Yeah. You, um, yeah, the one word that makes me cringe sometimes when, you know, whoever's talking about players and, and they call them assets, um, mm -hmm. you know, and it is, you mean the business side of it, they are and their resources and these other things. But I mean, that's where I think that disconnect comes as you're saying like that they're, that they're humans, you know, like because some kid who, who was drafted in the first round 18th overall doesn't, doesn't quite get it done in the first season and a half you know, he's, he, he's, he wants to get it done. He'd like to get it done. You know, like he's, he's not a wasted asset or a wasted resource. And I think what you're talking about there, I mean, if, if that message is coming from the head coach that you do care, you know, you want the best for him, which makes it be best for the team. Uh, you're, you're allowed to, to ask different things of them. Right. And, and you're in your, and you're, you're building that trust that they're going to, they're going to follow through on that. And I think that that's a awesome foundational piece to go from. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I just the, the human being in me and what I'm doing now. I mean, that's that's where I have my most success when they, when the people I'm working with trust trust me that my intention is their best interest, right? Their their greatest potential, uh, and that's my and that's the goal. You mean it, it's easier to get on board? Um, I think it's obviously more difficult for you but with dealing with with 23 guys like you said on the same team, and and maybe that's the the segue is. Is that, do you deem that your, your job to know these 23 guys that intimately, uh, kind of on the day to day that, that, that you're, you're building that yourself, or is that kind of spread out throughout your coaching staff? 
Yeah, well, well, two things, you know, just comment on what you just talked, touched on here prior was, um, you know, we can talk about it, but, you know, the old saying, talk is cheap, right? So it's, it's all built on action. It, it, they're going to know if I didn't say a word in that locker room for 82 games in practice, my actions are going to say everything in, in how I deal with things and how I show them. And, and they're watching me, too, how I handle situations. So um, the action part of it really is the most important. 